Nuclear fusion is the idea of taking smaller atoms and combining them to form bigger atoms. So for example, I have two hydrogens, H3 and H3. Each one of those hydrogens has one proton and two neutrons. And I fuse them together, and the result would be a helium-5, which would be two protons, three neutrons, as well as one additional neutron. Now, the way this works is if I took these two hydrogens and I put them on this side of the scale, and then I took the helium and the neutron and put them on this side of the scale, the result is the two hydrogens are actually heavier than the helium and neutron. So on uh, the left side of the scale, even though the left side of the scale is two protons, one, one, and four neutrons, two, two, and the right side of the scale is two protons, uh, two here and zero here, and four neutrons, three here and one here. Even though it's the same quantity of particles and types of particles, the left side would still be heavier than the right side. This is similar to how nuclear fission works, where when we split uranium, the amount of protons and neutrons stays consistent, but there's a slight loss in mass. Now, that brings up the question, well, wait a minute. In fission, I took a big atom and I split it into smaller ones, lost mass gain energy. Yet in fusion, I took small atoms, combined them together to form bigger ones, and the result was I lost mass gained energy. Well, how is that possible to fuse things together and lose mass gain energy as well as split things apart, lose mass gain energy? That's where this comes in. So what happens is, and this is not 100% perfect, uh, but this is a good sketch of what's going on. We have on the y-axis the um, how tightly bound the nucleons inside of the atom are. Another way to think of this is you could think of the y-axis as the mass per nucleon. So a nucleon is a proton or neutron, nucleon meaning it's in the nucleus. So that singular proton is the most massive when it's just by itself as hydrogen. The act of taking two protons and making them sit next to each other to give you helium causes a substantial loss in mass, and therefore the result is energy. Now we eventually get to iron, where iron has the least mass per nucleon. So this is how fusion works for elements that are below iron, and how fission works for elements that are above iron the idea that you lose mass, gain more energy. So again, iron would have the least mass per nucleon, which means if you fuse or fission iron, you are going to gain more mass, which would cost you energy. Yet, if you head towards iron, so if you're below iron, you fuse elements together to form bigger elements, or you fizzle apart or fission heavy elements into smaller elements, such as you know things below, taking uranium or plutonium and moving them to elements that are below, heading towards iron, you are losing mass and therefore gaining energy. This also explains why um, the cores of supermassive stars are made of iron because stars undergo a fusion process and eventually it brings them down to iron. And then when you get to iron, there's no point in fusing iron anymore. Uh, another thing you'll notice about this curve is that the drop from hydrogen to helium is significantly bigger than a drop from uranium into some of these other lower level elements here. The actual vertical drop, the amount of mass lost. This is why fusion actually produces more energy than fission. It's also why a thermonuclear bomb, such as a hydrogen bomb, is far more deadly than a atomic bomb or an A-bomb that uses uranium or plutonium. So our last thing is a quick example of a fusion reaction. 
the fusion of hydrogen 2 and hydrogen 1 forms a stable helium isotope. So what would this look like? Hydrogen 2, that would be 2, 1, H. Hydrogen 1 would be 1, 1, H. And it will yield 3, 2, H, E. 2 plus 1 is 3. 1 plus 1 is 2. Second element is helium. 